Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you are having an excellent morning. In today's video, we are going to wrap up the entire series on the introduction of auto layout by showing you how to support the landscape orientation of our app. So let me show you what happens when we rotate our current application right here. And you'll see that we have some messed up pages and when you swipe over, it just does not look right at all. And what I want to show you how to do is to go back to our completed application over here that does support the landscape orientation. And that's going to allow you to spin your application over these views right here, shrink according to the size of your application inside of your device, as well as being able to swipe over to the next page like so. All right, so that's what we're going to do for today's lesson. And if I have some time left over, I'll show you how to perform some refactoring inside of our project so that our code base is much cleaner and easier to read. So let's go ahead and get started with Xcode right now. Okay, so back inside of Xcode, I'm currently open with swiping controller. And this class allows me to swipe very easily between all of these pages inside of my pages array over there. And the question right now is how do I allow the support of landscape orientation when I hit command right or command left on the keyboard? And the simulator now looks a little messed up like this. So what's really happening is that when you rotate your device over, the size of the actual view controller changes. So when that happens, you can actually be notified of that behavior inside of swiping controller. And somewhere up here, I will just type view will transition to size. So inside of this, you can say collection view right here dot invalidate layout. And basically when we are notified of the size change, we'll invalidate the entire collection views layout so that it knows how to redraw itself. So if you flip it over like this, let me get it back to the correct orientation here. And I'll flip it over to landscape, which will look like this now. So you can swipe over and your pages will look a lot better. So the problem right now is whenever I swipe, let's say when I'm on the third page right here, or the fourth page rather, I can swipe over and it needs to land on the correct index. So you see it's kind of shifted to a different spot and it really needs to be in this position here. So the way to fix that is to make use of this coordinator object here. And let me just show you how it's done. So type in coordinator and you will say animate alongside transition. So what this means is as you are transitioning from this to that, this little bit of animation will run inside of this code right there. And what I'll do is just use enter, get my completion block and use an underscore because I don't care about that variable context. And inside of here is what I would need to change a little bit. So let me invalidate the layout in there. And then down here, I can either type in nil like that, or I can say enter type underscore. And let me just hit backspace on the code here if I can get to it and I should be good to go. So if I try to run this, it won't work until I fix that with a self collection view layout, invalidate layout. Let me bring this back to portrait and then swipe over to the second page because it's easier to show what's happening when you are there. So that looks just the same as it did before. But now what I'm going to do is to scroll to the correct index during the animation here. And what I mean is I will say self dot collection view and scroll to a specific index path. And that index path I'll just create up here index path equal index path. And let's see the constructor will be item section section is zero. And the question is what is item going to be or in other words, what the correct index needs to be. So if it's this, it needs to be zero one two and that's kept kind of kept track of by the page control. So, you know, page control is here, page control, and we'll just say current page. And you can almost run this, but you need a self in front of that. So let's fix that with a self page control current page. And inside of here, you will need to say index path. This will be dot centered, see centered horizontally. And then the animation, we will of course set it to true. 
and I think I can get rid of that to just say underscore and we should be in a lot better position here so swiping over to the third page or perhaps the fourth page I will rotate the actual application and you see it scrolls correctly to the fourth index like so and if I rotate it back to the portrait it does the correct behavior rotate I am on the second page and perhaps let's check the last page rotate over here that's the correct portrait orientation and rotate back we get to the last page over here so really good stuff and the last thing I do want to mention is that there is a slight bug on the first page so let me get back to portrait and this first page right here is messed up and it only occurs inside of the iPhone 10 simulator and I'm not exactly sure why so let's rotate it here it kind of disappears on you so now you swipe over it's back right so one thing I do want to show you how to fix is let's say I rotate over this thing is kind of shifted over to the right and it's not in the current position or the correct position rather so if you click on it it actually goes back to the center so I actually have a fix that I worked out on another project so I'm just going to say if current see page control dot current page if it's equal to zero I'm going to say self dot collection view I'm going to manually set the content offset which is pretty much going to be dot zero for me otherwise I'll just use else and do the normal scroll to call so I believe this needs to have a self on the left of page control because we are inside of this closure and to prevent something like a retain cycle we just need to say self in front of these variable names and okay so that looks okay let me scroll over to this scroll over there that looks okay so the question is if I flip it over on this current page of zero will the actual animation look correct so if I click on here you see that it's already centered which means that it is doing exactly what I need it to do now there might still be a bug where some of the pages don't appear correctly so for whatever reason the first page inside of the iPhone 10 simulator is just bad I've tried it on a different simulator and everything looks okay so maybe I'll have some time and go through some of this and the nice thing about Xcode 9 is that you can run both simulators at the same time and this should run relatively quickly because I have loaded it before but it might take a while so perhaps I'll fast forward through this section and maybe not so here we go here's our application if I flip it over everything's okay and if I perhaps you know flip it over here bring it back to the first page everything's fine and it's just the iPhone 10 simulator that's just really bad and I have a feeling that there are going to be plenty of additional bugs that we are just not aware of yet because you know none of us have those actual iPhone 10 devices I did pre-order mine but let's see what the UI looks like when we finally get our hands on one okay so one last thing I do want to talk about here is that swiping controller is a controller class and oftentimes what happens is that we have a lot of code inside of this particular view controller so if you scroll all the way down we have about 148 lines of code which isn't all that bad but what tends to happen in a production project is that you will suffer from a fat view controller problem which is what is commonly referred to when your code or your file starts to grow beyond like a thousand lines of code so one simple fix to alleviate this pain inside of production code is to move some of these functions over to a, another file and the way to do this very cleanly is to just simply create a swiping controller extension so let's just create a new file and then for this I'll call it swiping controller and let's just perhaps say extension and inside of here I can first import UI kit I think I need that say extension and you can extend swiping controller and in here is where you would include those methods that you don't necessarily want inside of this file here so let's assume swiping controller without anything after it is the main file you can just cut all of that code and pop it into your extension class like that 
So you run your code, everything's going to be fine. So one problem that you will encounter is that when you're inside of an extension, you can't always access the private members of your class. So it says due to private protection level, you can't access page control. And that's just one downside of this approach, but I think it's okay because it does make our base controller class, the swiping controller, a lot cleaner. So I will fix these privates here. So, you know, let's kind of go down to the page controller and move, remove the private and our extension should now compile because we just removed that restriction. And then we can run our code and everything will be fine. And this error still shows up, but our code is fine nonetheless. So that's how you would refactor your code. And if you wanted to pull out additional files or methods into a different file, you can do that as well. So what I mean is one thing that you'll often see inside of production projects is you will allocate all of your collection view or table view methods into a different file. So this one, we will also say swiping controller and we'll just say delegate or UI collection view. And then inside of here, I will simply take out all of these methods that are related to collection view here. So let's say I wanted to just simply cut and paste all that code. Perhaps I'll wipe this out because I don't need it. And this collection view will kind of be operated through this extension file here. So extension and swiping controller, brace, brace. And let's paste to see if this actually works for me. So let's build. And I might not be able to compile these collection views because I have not imported UI kit, which is where these classes come from. So importing that gets our code to work correctly. And let's go back to the swiping controller class and I can move additional methods, but I'm just going to stop here. And basically our entire file here is only 97 lines of code. It's a lot shorter and makes sense to me. And so this process of moving code into separate files is often referred to as pop or protocol oriented programming where you can move all your protocol methods into a separate file which cleans up your entire project. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this video and also this entire series on auto layout and all the things that you can do with it. I really hope you enjoyed all the lessons that we went over and hopefully you learned a lot. Now, if you want to learn even more, you can check out the Instagram course over there as well as the core data course over there. A lot of students have enrolled in both courses and they've learned a lot and also they've released their own projects onto the app stores as well. All right, so make sure to check out everything using the links down in the description below and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. That's gonna be it for me. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.